All right, so um, so today we're going to move forward from where we uh, left off on, how are we looking? I think we're in range. We're both blind, so we're like, I don't know, blurry amoeba-like thing over there. Seems like we're doing good. So uh, we started off last week, we, we covered a lot of ground, right? We talked about, uh, we laid out the sort of conceptual foundation of this semester, and we laid out some of the basic movements we're going to utilize to make, put those principles into practice, right? So what is the foundation? Yeah. The idea is uh, I want to disrupt their stability, right? I, if I have my opponent, so Don, please turn this way, and we're both standing here still, and I try to engage to one of these positions for the takedown, like once I get to the position of the Ahsoka Gari, like the full-blown thing where I had his shoulders hit back, all this, and like, yeah, you know, it's like a cool throw. But if we're standing still right in front of each other, and I step in, He's going to react accordingly, right? He's going to push me, push back into me. He's going to step back. He's going to do whatever. It's very difficult to take somebody down who's standing directly in front of you in good position. Like it's, you know, we need to disrupt their stability. We need to take them off of their track. So we do that by moving them around. So then we have to start going into, well, how can I move them around? Well, I have basically speaking two, three, four, and five, six directions I can move him, right? I can make him step to the right, I can make him step to the left, I can push him backward, I can pull him forward, I can break his posture down, and I can push his shoulders back. These are the ways that I can move him around, that I can manipulate the situation to uh, facilitate a throw. Last week we utilized, we started out with our basic thing. The easiest thing that we can accomplish is we can snap their posture down, right? So I can initiate with that. I can get my collar grip. Flare my elbow, posture net, and now from how he reacts to this, now we can start going into things. Now, very important thing to note. Let me get your posture up, Don. Okay. I'm gonna try to punch your shoulders behind your hips. Uh, and we'll get a picture sideways so the camera can see this. And you know I'm grabbing just here. And I just want you to give me some like logic, like natural resistance. Right. It's hard to get that those shoulders behind the hips. Right. Even if I really go into it, like he's just gonna step back. Yeah. But now posture up, or, or I'm sorry, break your posture, posture up, your shoulders are going to go behind, right? Why? Right. Going up, yeah. So I'm taking the momentum that he's creating and pushing it, pushing against it, right? So today we're going to accommodate him the same way, right? We're going to use the thing that they're going to do against him, which is basically almost all of this stuff is built on this idea. But today we're going to take advantage of the idea if they drive forward, right? So it can start with the whole thing. I had him snap down, blah, blah, blah. He postured up. I pushed him back. And now he comes in, right? Boom. We'll go into this in a second. It could also just be, you know, we started out. Maybe I wasn't able to snap him down, but I was able to maybe get my grip. So we're now in this default position. I want to start initiating. You know, where I was trying to initiate a situation, right? So maybe I'm pushing him back. He drives forward. And now we're going to get into... Right? But what I want to take advantage of is him moving forward. Right? So we're going to go into the Sayanagi, and we're going to go into a couple of variations. Uh, so the first one we'll do is the Ifan Sayanagi. I'd say I personally like this one the least. It's the most dramatic, but it's also, I feel like, well, I'll go into the nuances in a second. Okay? So the basic function is this. Uh, without all the setup for a second. It's still on camera? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So the Ifan Sayanagi going to be, I grab the, I have the collar or the sleeve at the elbow, I have the collar. I'm going to check the time by lifting, you know, so I lift his elbow up, I lift, check the time. This arm is going to go under his armpit, like, I'm trying to chop his armpit with my elbow. My foot is going to cross over, yeah? I want to step back. So this is the first thing. I want to load him up on me like a, like a bag of presents, right? So I'm Santa Claus. This is here. Bag of presents, all right? So that's one of the first things that happens. I'm getting this. I want to have two other things kind of happen simultaneously. And I'm going to do that without the grip, okay? I want to lower my hips as I engage, and I want to kind of like bump him in the belly with my hips. So as I'm here, I want to kind of get my hips underneath. I'm creating a fulcrum, which is effectively like my back. So again, I have my grips. I'm going to go really slow. I push him back. He comes forward. We get here. Now I'm pretty easily able to stand up. I'm going to finish the throw down. And I'm going to bring the shoulder that I have the grip 
to the opposite foot. And get complete my turn. Okay, that'd be like our hip on say not. I so, so we'll just go into them again. So again, one more time. I'll, I'll just pick you up this time. I'm here. In a perfect world, I'm really knocking him off balance, right? I snapped him down, he postured up, I pushed him back, he comes in, boom. And like you feel how easy it was, you can see how smooth that transition was. Once he's like, whoa, whoa, moving around. Versus again, if I try to pull him into it, it's like, it's gonna be very difficult. I mean, maybe if you're strong, I have these weak little arms, terrible. Don knows, they'll be moving sweet there, so. Uh, so uh, so that's our hip on Sayanagi. Now, the immediate simple variation of that is the drop Sayanagi, which is the same basic thing, except instead of uh, stepping in and staying on my feet, I'm going to drop to my knees. So, same idea, I'm pushing him back, he comes in, and now I'm here. And then, same basic thing, taking him up, taking him over. Personal preference, I like the drop Sayanagi better for one particular reason. I would not categorize myself as being technically the greatest judo, air, air quotes, greatest judo guy. Um, I feel like the ippon requires like a lot of accuracy, right? If I don't get the ippon right, so I'm here, I punched him back, he came in, and like my timing was a little goofy, I feel like I'm kind of in a bad spot now, right? Like if I don't get him, my hips in the right spot, it's sort of hard to force this to happen. But if I get to the drop Sayanagi, I say boom, he push forward, I just kind of get here, I can just sort of bomb him over and then control the shoulder. Does that make sense? So if I just fasten myself to that arm, I can sort of turn it into a sacrifice throw, I feel like, from a failed, like kind of a quasi-failed one, and just shake him off. You're sort of threatening the back line at that point, but you, you know you fucked up for saying not, so you gotta do something. So uh, I'll do those one more time. So number one, I'm here, and again I'm initiating. By punching him back, he engages, I catch the position. Okay? The adjustments are everything crosses over. I am loading this arm up onto my shoulder like present. As I engage, I want my butt to bump him and my hips to drop. So boom. I'm lifting him up and I'll bring this shoulder to that foot. It's that, that simple at that point. Alternatively, same basic setup. Punch him back, he comes in, here. And then same basic finish. But the goal is, as he's moving forward, I'm kind of moving backward. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? Cool. Let's go ahead and park up, work out. One, two, three.